Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome to a new video. My name is Prince Mason. Today we are going to be doing an extensive retouching overview for one of these images because they're literally the same thing. I use the same editing technique and everything to edit both, but we're going to be, you know, concentrating on this particular image. I'm going to show you guys how I took this image from here all the way to here. So this right here is straight out of the camera, capture one edit, Photoshop, this and then capture one edit. So I'm going to show you how I got this image, like I said, from here to here. So let's start with uh, capture one edit for our straight out of camera. We didn't do too much. I literally just pulled in my highlights and pulled in my shadows a little bit with my levels. I love the levels tool. I love the fact that it's in capture one. Any editing software with the levels tool is going to be a favorite for me because I really love this tool. I use it a lot in Photoshop and you know, I love that it's in Capture One. Um, so another thing I did was that I pulled up my blacks because, you know, um, the image was a little bit underexposed. So I had a lot of places that um, were kind of like um, underexposed, like her hair and all that. And I wanted to see all those details. So I pulled that, um, pulled that out. And also the shadows, as you guys can see, just made the image a little bit brighter. Now this was shot with a Canon EOS R5 and you guys can see the settings down here if you want to see the behind the scenes of this video then I'll put a link in the description so you guys can definitely go check that out okay great now let's move to Photoshop and I'll show you guys how I made this happen so in Photoshop let's go all the way to the bottom and this is uh, you know capture one edit in Photoshop I'll explain this lines to you guys um, later in the video this white space is here if you guys know then you already know I was just trying to um, expand the background and, and just make the canvas a bit bigger okay great so the first thing I always do is in an image like this because we shot with um, uh, plywood just the gray plywood behind her is just take out any artifacts that are not meant to be there or anything that's not meant to be in the image so right now you can see this line where the plywood was joined i had to take that out and also the leg of the sea stand and a few other things in the background and that's just really easy to take out all you have to do is just pick your lasso tool fill then content aware and just click OK and you'll take that out. So that was what I did. And after that, I removed the blemishes from her face. I know you guys can't see it, but let's just zoom in and see our before and after before, after removed all those blemishes. And then I did micro dungeon burn. Um, you don't have to do micro dungeon burn for an image like this, but because I wanted her face to stand out and I didn't want to just move colors around. I wanted to keep the highlights where they were. Um, I decided not to use frequency separation at first and just use micro dodge and burn and that is what I did right here you know took out a few things you know all over um, just you know and you guys can see that it looks really good then after micro dodge and burn the next thing I did was my I um, created a stamp visible layer so that's shift option command and E or shift alternate control and E on PC and created a stamp visible layer and then i did uh, run my frequency separation actions again by the way if you don't have my frequency separation actions you can go get them for free um both my basic and advanced frequency separation actions i have them on for free so definitely go download that or if you want the whole pack then i have my retouching essentials pack that i use to retouch all my images it has 14 amazing actions you guys can just go buy that and support the channel it's pretty cheap for what it will do because you're going to use it for like such a long time so definitely go check that out okay great so i did my basic frequency separation again and this time it was just with my mixer brush tool on my low layer just to even out the skin and smoothing everything out a bit more as you guys can see before after before after it looks great so all these things i've been doing they were just like the basic things right then global dodge and burn to make the skin pop to make her stand out so um you guys can see 
looks nice if you don't know anything about global dungeon burn um, definitely check out my other videos i have a ton of videos on global dungeon burn micro dungeon burn and frequency operation you guys can go watch that and learn how to retouch like me okay great then after that i ran my eyes and teeth widening action this is an action i have out for free so definitely go download that so if you look at her eyes that's the before that's the after stands out now before after this is the eyes are the gateway to the soul so always make sure that the eyes of your subject stand out right okay great now after doing that i just added um some levels to this i told you guys i love my levels i dragged in my highlights but i left my shadows because i didn't want the image to be any darker at this point right so the next thing i did after that was sort out the background right so i always had this idea in mind that i wanted the background to be brownish because it fits the aesthetic of my instagram page that i was trying to keep but i might kind of ruin it very soon but anyways i'll put the instagram page on the screen so you guys can see it. i just loved the brown aesthetic that i've been you know working with for a little bit now and i wanted to keep that up right and this image looks really good it looks great um where it is but i just wanted to move towards that direction and i wanted to change the background so that's exactly what i did with the background right now so i'm going to go over everything one after the other and i'll show you what i did so the first thing i did was mess around with my hue saturation you guys can see the master but i also clipped everything down to this because i had masked the background out let's go to my mask and i'll show you guys i masked her out of the background so i made sure that i clipped all the layers to this so i do not have to create a layer mask for all my other layers right so first thing i did was just drag my hue saturation to a particular point that it made the background um brown then you know my saturation then the lightness i reduced it to to make sure it was darker and i made sure that i checked colorize while i was doing this so always make sure you have that checked the next thing i did was the background just looked really bland and you know there was nothing that was standing out it was just brown and bland right so i added my color balance to it so in my color balance what i did was um if you guys can see these are the shadows i added some blues to my shadows and added some cyans to it then for my highlights um i added some yellows to the highlights and you know um some magenta and uh, so that's my mid-tones added some yellows and some magenta and for my highlights all i did was just added some magenta and a little bit of red so that's what i did with that then after that you guys can see after that i added some texture to the background because i wanted the background to look like it was a canvas background or even if it wasn't even if it was wood i wanted it to look like it had texture on it right so now with the texture i changed my overlay i changed my um, blend mode from normal this how i was going to look in normal which is not bad but i changed it to overlay and after changing it to overlay another thing i did was that i used the blend if option to make sure that i removed a little bit of it just hold option alternate and just split that i removed a little bit of it from both the highlights and right here the underlying layer the shadows because i didn't want it to be too much right okay great so if you know how to use your blended layer if you don't all you have to do is just hold your alternate option and just drag the sliders and it just just let me show you guys okay just hold option or alternate on pc to split this and it will remove from the highlights or the shadows so right here is the shadows if you guys can see right here this part that you have the shadows if i drag this out all the way it reduces it reduces the texture from the shadows right but all i want to do is just split it so it blends it in when it's removing the textures but you can do it for the underlying layer too right so let me just take this all the way back as you guys can see it has a lot of texture but all i did was just split this then just move it make sure you hold option or alternate where i split this and splitting um your sliders here right okay great now after that i added another hue saturation to this and that was just to remove the yellows from the background because i felt like the yellows were too much and that's how i got my background from here to here right then i felt like the image looked good and it still stood out but the red of the dress was taking um more of the attention from the image i wanted the whole image to just look very monotone and is it monotonic is that a word i don't know i wanted a monotone image right 
uh, monotoned image. Oh God, English is not my forte, but you guys get what I'm saying, right? And um, I then changed the color of the the dress she was wearing, right? I made sure I selected the dress, changed the color, but you know, even at um, and I used selective color to do that. You know went to my reds messed around with this and then i went to my hue saturation and i clipped my hue saturation to my selective color layer all you have to do is hold option or alternate and hover between both layers and then you can clip this to this layer and anything that you do on your top layer will only show on the bottom layer and not on the other layers that's what that's why we clip layers right and i changed the dress to have a similar color to her skin and the background and that's just going to give like this earth colored image right okay great and after that i did my rich tones action which is in my retouching essentials pack so if you want to get that or you need this rich tones action which i really love then check out my retouching essentials pack and then my color look up you guys can see that's like wow look at her skin her skin just popped yes i am advertising my lots if you guys haven't gotten my skin tone lots then definitely go check those out it'll help you get amazing skin tones um without actually stressing and that's what i use right now for all my pictures i use my skin tone lots for all my images and i love the feel that i get from it for this particular image i used the signature skin tone 6 and if you get it and you use it comment below tag me on instagram let me see your work right and then i added a little curve adjustment um to my image as you guys can see i just bent slightly um, my mid-tones up just to make the image stand out a little bit but that introduced more reds to my image so what i did was that i just used my hue saturation to reduce the reds from the image you guys can see pull that down and that's how we got to this point which it, it looks really good yeah and that's how we got to this point and you guys can see it looks really good but i just wanted to go a little further and the next thing i did was that i got my crop tool and i pulled out my background you guys you can pull out your background like this as big as you want it to be after pulling out your background make sure you create a stamp visible layer let me show you guys how to do that create a stamp visible layer great so after you create a stamp visible layer right um pull out do your whole crop thing and then pick your rectangular marquee tool select the part of your image go to fill and go to content aware and click ok and photoshop will do the magic for you it's going to extend your canvas okay yes that's it typically it does not extend it like this but you know you can just keep doing it and you fill everything out okay so you guys can see it has extended this perfectly looks good but you guys get the whole idea right so that's what happens then you can extend your background like that and after doing mine this is what i got but not just that as you can see she's a little bit stretched out so after extending it i just felt like um because of the lens i used it kind of like just made her look a little smaller than she actually is in real life and a little less tall so what i did was that i just made her look a little taller in the image using liquify and then i also pushed in her hair you know because it just made her have a slicker look and then i added a vignette to the image and that was everything that i did in photoshop to get to this point so let's see our before right here and let's see our after in photoshop before and after right okay so let's go back to capture one right and i did a few things in capture one now the first thing i did in capture one was that i used my color balance to just get a color grade for the image because the image looked good when i brought it from photoshop into capture one but i wanted it to look a little bit more i'll use the word cinematic but that was the idea i had for the portrait right i wanted the portrait to be moody i wanted it to be monotonic i said the word again i hope that's a word <laughs> but you guys get and what i did was that for my master i made it just a little bit warmer but if you guys go to my shadows you can see that i added some blues 
all you have to do is just drag this in to add some blues to your image but i added some blues to my shadows and for my mid-tones i didn't do too much i think all i did was that i just made sure that my mid-tones were kind of like really toned down um so right here is your tonal range and right here is this part of the the slider this thing here is the tonal range of your mid-tones while right here is the saturation of your mid-tones right so what i did was that i just messed around with the tonal range i brought it down a little bit to make sure that the image was i would not use the word contrasty but re it just looked really rich right for my mid-tones and for my highlights i think i just did the same thing i just pulled down my highlights a little bit and that was all i did with my color balance and right here my curves are just meant for my luma curve another thing i did was that i pulled down my mid-tones just a little bit and i pulled up my highlights in my levels a little bit more and my highlights in general for my dynamic range as you guys can see i felt like it was just a little bit bright so i pulled that down a little bit it's just minor adjustments you know at this point it's just fine adjustments and it just depends on what you want but you know i feel like if i didn't stop retouching this image i would have continued going if i did not just stop and post the image right so at this point it's just fine adjustments then another thing i did was that i added some grain to the image because i wanted like i said i was going for this filmic look right so i added some grain to the image and i also added some vignettes some more vignettes in capture one and that's it so the image came into capture one like this and this is what we got at the end so let's see our before and let's see our after and the same thing i did with this image see our before i just used right here i used the um fill option in photoshop and content aware to take this out and this is the after for this image so final images there you go so let's see our before and after side by side and for this let's see our before and after side by side i hope you guys love these images i hope you guys love this retouching overview i think this was like pretty long but i mean i just want to show you guys everything i did to get this image from a to z or from a to amazing ha 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 me and my boring jokes but anyways thank you so much for watching today's video definitely check out my digital store and purchase something from me support the channel so i can make more videos for you guys um also comment below let me know if you love this give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel i'll see you guys in the next video have an amazing day oh, oh i also have the behind the scenes of this image out so if you guys want to see how i shot this definitely definitely go check that out i'll see you guys in the next video um have an amazing day guys peace out